All right, another another week playing some more Death and Taxes today. Um, tomorrow the stream is going to be a little bit different. I'll get into that a little bit more once the people start trickling in. But I will not be streaming tomorrow. But I will be uh, on somebody else's stream at a different time. So we'll talk about that in a tiny bit, and I'll mention it again at the end of the uh, the recording today. But for now, just more Death and Taxes. Deck sweet. Uh, I love to play Death and Taxes, so there's never, hopefully, never going to be a week where I'm not I'm not playing this deck. Um, mean Fanny Pack, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. But there was like I was talking about a couple minor changes. I'm not exactly sure what I want to enact, <clears throat> but there are a couple of things that I wanted to consider trying. Between, like, a Blessed Alliance, a Brightling, something like that. I've seen a lot of Delver on Lynn recently, and a lot of my losses have been attributed specifically to Trinity Nemesis. Maybe I'm supposed to cut a Chalice. I went up to the third Chalice when I saw a bunch of, um, Storm? But Storm's kind of died off in favor of these Delver decks. I can see cutting a Chalice for, like, the Brightling. I was considering shaving something in the main deck. Even, like, moving Palace Jailer to the sideboard. Or I can always just shave a Path. But shaving a Path to play a different sideboard card for the Delver matchup seems weird, because Path is also really good. Just happens to be pretty terrible against True Name Nemesis. God, I hate, I hate all of you. I hate the whole Discord. You're di the Discord is banned from my from my stream. Get out of here, all of you. If you're in on this Tithe Taker meme. But yeah, I was considering uh, Blessed Alliance, which I guess I conveniently have one. I don't even remember playing it, but... Grixis control got you down from Fiend Slayer Paladin. I mean, that's why we're still playing the Spirit Keeper. I would actually be cutting the Spirit Keeper because I haven't seen a lot of Grixis control, but Spirit Keeper has been, like, weirdly good against Grixis Delver and most Delver variants. <clears throat> it just trades so well and just explodes into a bunch of spirits. But I can definitely see swapping a Path for a Blessed Alliance and then maybe, like, a Chalice for a Brightling in the sideboard if I want to... Try to lean more towards Delver decks. Maybe that's, like, too aggressive, but... What the heck. All in the spirit of testing, right? Chalice of Void's been pretty unimpressive since Storm has kind of died off. I don't like Chal Chalice in any matchups. Like, I don't specifically go out of my way to have Chalice in a lot of matchups besides Storm. This camera keeps falling. Besides Storm and uh, Miracles. The Detective Pikachu behind you? Yep, yeah, yep, Detective Pikachu over there. She's not responding. She might have her headphones in, I don't know. But anyway, I don't hate something like this, maybe. Swap a path for a Blessed Lions, Chalice for Brightling. Could also see cutting the Remorseful Cleric, but if I'm cutting the Remorseful Cleric, I'm either, like, glutting on three drops, or I'm just, like, playing a third Revoker. Otherwise, it's about the same in the Delver matchup, and, like, Cutting Remorse Cleric for third Revoker is just actively making my Delver matchup worse. Because Revoker is so vastly unplayable and um, against almost every Delver variant. But I think I'll, I'll try something like this. Kind of happy with this. Because the Chalice, the Brightling in the sideboard still helps a lot with the Miracles matchup. Storm matchup obviously goes down a tick. But um, the Blessed Alliance, I don't know, maybe the Blessed Alliance is just really bad. But maybe we'll play like a Holy Light. Do I even own a Holy Light? I do. I own two. All right. Play Sarah Avenger. I mean, if I'm gonna like cut Remorse Cleric for Sarah Avenger, it does the same thing that we're talking about the Delver matchup. It is slightly better than Remorseful Cleric against Delver specifically because of the whole offense defense thing. It holds equipment better. It doesn't die to Forked Bolt slash uh, Dread of Night slash whatever like X One Hate they might have. But Sarah Avenger trash shame. Sarah Avenger is sweet. I miss I miss playing Sarah Avenger, but just like it's been really unimpressive in a lot of other matchups for me. That's kind of why I like Cleric. Cleric's, like, more broadly applicable, whereas Avenger is only really good in uh, creature-based matchups like Delver or the Mirror. But anyway, I'll just try something like this. This seems okay. I need to update my deck lists, but I'll do that while we're, uh, while we're getting started. I just thought we were recommending, recommending good cards like Tithe Get out of my streamy, honey. Anyway. 
Um, edit deck. XJ shark. Wait, was there actually a shark? Oh, I guess there's kind of a shark over there, but hidden. Oh, okay, there we go. Now we check the true XJ shark. Can I edit my deck? Cardboard, cardboard life. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> well, this hand is shockingly medium. I mean, we have like Mom into Mystic, which is great. If I'm complaining about losing to Delver a bunch, like this hand's insane, right? I'm gonna keep this, and then my opponent's gonna like sneak and show me. So, Urborg Thoughtseize. Sorry. So depths or um like pox or something. So what did I cut? Shaved a chalice. What the? This sideboard. Oh, this sideboard's really old and outdated. Oops. Cyber sells a mind break trap in it. Brightling. Alright. So they take the Stone Forge, which means they're probably not Turbo Depths. Because I don't think Turbo Depths cares about Stone Forge. I think they'd try to work their way through. Uh, Flicker Wisps or something. Especially because, like, Flicker Wisps' mom blocks for a million years. Maybe it is Turbo Depths. Upper up decay the mom, sure. Just run out of 1 1 Ballista. It's not getting any better. Entire Discord knows how much I try on lands, yeah. I mean, that's not exactly a, uh, a controversial opinion. Um, let me refresh my Twitch page, see if my updates took. Low, alright. It's gonna take a while for them to ghost quarter me down, but... Ooh. I like this exchange. Because there's no reason to kill this on end step, I could just attack first. Yeah. Well, missed a point of damage. Actually, they just block, right? God, I hate Arborg. I can't just click on my basic lands. Kill the Mox Diamond, because it's free. Um, Cardboard Live update. A dredged loam and hit wasteland garden, sure. Oh, the sideboard sells a mind break trap in it. What the heck? Another bob, that's rude. I need to put prelate on two, cut them off of this loam. Also cuts them off of decays, does not cut them off of um, crop rotation, but I'm not that scared of crop rotation right now. I think I like just cutting them off of this loam engine. Especially because they could make a bunch of merit lages and eventually will down my forces if I don't just shut off the loam right now. off only my GTA, so that's fine. Real stage. Why is my deck list updating? Update stream? Alright, let's try that. They played the stage. Seems like kind of aggressive. Maybe they really want to get their loam online. Sure. 
but now I just get to attack. So the cards in hand are Loam and Unknown, and they can't even crop rotation if they want to, so we're not afraid of just dying here. Might just run out the Wisp. Maybe not. Bad against Thoughtseize, good against killing them. <laughs> It also lets me Wisp this Dark Confidant for a turn, which lets them draw one less card. Specifically, it turns what could be as long as a four-turn clock into a two-turn clock. So if I cut off the Dark Confidant, they only get one trigger before they're dead, whereas if I just sit here with Wisp in hand, they're going to draw four cards. I guess maybe not four, because they are probably going to take damage off Bob. If they're at nine, this is actually a three-turn clock, as opposed to a two, maybe one-turn clock, though. Probably not. I think I'm supposed to run this out. I think this is dumb. They have two cards in hand, though. The top deck crop rotation or... No, they can't even cast crop rotation yet. So they need exactly depths. Now nah, we'll wait. I think casting Wisp is a good way to lose the game that I have pretty locked up otherwise. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Immediately punished. This is when they just like play depths and then Thaw sees me. God damn it. <laughs> I'm so mad. We still have a lot of different outs to, to block this. So I'm not overly concerned. Of course, if we just draw five straight lands, it's not great. We have two more Wisps, four Plows, three Caracas, that's like nine. Bought Green White Value Town. Neat. Got a deal on Catacombs, though. Always down for, for locking down deals. Alright, so this is uh, kind of shit, but it's life. Perfect. Well, it's life. Sometimes you make the play that you think, like, you analyze the, the upsides and the downsides, and you're like, alright, well, I think I'll do this play, and the exact bad thing that you planned for happens to you. That's definitely, there's easily another game there where my opponent draws Dark Depths, and doesn't draw Thought. I guess I should, if I had seen what my top card was, it doesn't actually make that much of a difference, because my opponent's, oh no, my opponent flipped the Thought Seas, then drew the Depths, so they would have drawn the Thought Seas for turn, attack for six. Put them to like four. There's a chance we can win there if we play two wisps for sure. Kind of lame. Blessed Alliance is actually decent. Not as good as Path, I don't think, but it does randomly beat Sylvan Safekeeper if they don't play around it. Um, Relic Order. Probably Recruiter. Cut Thalia's, cut... Spirit Keeper... Wait, shave the Stoneforge package, maybe? I think that's the one I usually cut. 
Sword's good at clocking GT. Yeah, maybe I cut GT instead. Fire and Ice kills Bob, so does GT, so I don't know. Never know exactly how to sideboard this matchup. Ballista kills Bob's and Safe Keepers. Wisps are fine. Eh, and Crusader sucks. Crusader's good at killing them, but you can kill them with a lot of stuff late game. Anyway. Did, did Cardboard Life finally update? Someone tell me if I have a stupid. Oh, okay, I got a Blessed Alliance on the sideboard. We did it. Love to play first. But also love to keep this hand. This hand's very good. Plow and Caracas, Vile, a bunch of goodies. Mox Diamond. Might be revoking that Mox Diamond. Needle my file, probably. At least I'm not needling Crocus here. Oh man, this Rogue is about to be gas. Mostly Thal sees me. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> what do they got a name with this one? Caracas? Wasteland? Port? Wasteland, sure. Mox Diamond so busted. My opponent about to get fucking ranched with their with their Mox Diamond hand. Nice deck. Opponent <laughs> snap concedes. <laughs> Got him good. All right, game three time. <laughs> All right, that should be everything up to now. The old lock pieces on mana sources game. <laughs> Yeah, Mox Invert. Yeah, this is this is fair. This is fair magic. My opponent shut down my Aether Mile. I shut down my opponent's Mox Diamond. That's fair as fair. Uh, just run it back, I guess. This hand feels good. If my if we get my Aether Vile Pith and Needle, it's a little rough. But we're on the draw. We have a lot of good castables, so. I don't think the two players in the game are bad enough for this to be a vintage game. God. Yeah, playing in that playing in Eternal again really opened my eyes about vintage. Wow, rude. My opponent made me play with fair mana, so I shut down every mana source they own. Hey, they played two Mox Diamonds on turn one. That's that's fast mana. I was just making them play fair. They didn't need to discard all their lands to their Mox Diamonds. They could have played. They could have played Wasteland and played their land. Obviously, maybe they wanted their color sources more than the Wasteland, but like, they could have played around Fraction Roker. I mean, with their colorless source and their white source. And yeah, obviously that. Wow, Snap takes the surgical. Because we have to keep his file unless my opponent thosses me again. <sighs> now they're taking the vial, but now we still have like this path to answer a, a Lage. Oh, opponent's just planning on killing me. This is my opponent's last two cards, like, Depths and, uh... Depths and Hexmage? Playing around stuff is for jump blockers. So I really want to draw land. 
That would be very nice. Uh oh. We really want to draw two lands consecutively. Or even just one to shut off this Mox Diamond would be very helpful. Buy me a little bit here, please. Oh my god. Let's revoke the Mox Diamond, slow him down a little bit. Hopefully get me time to get to this Flicker Wisp. Had this realization the other day that the real balancing force against blue cantrips is other decks getting to play stupidly powerful stuff like Mox Diamond and Crop Rotation. I mean, yeah, Chalice of the Void is a lot of the other end of the blue. There's like blue on one end and Chalice of the Void's all over the other. Throwing stop ending? Yeah. Definitely. I was going to mention that as more people trickled in, going to mention it towards the middle of the stream and then at the end. Title. Uh, yeah, I haven't changed the title in like three days. Or tight. That's that's just totally different. But I also haven't changed my stream title in three days. Guess we're playing ballista here. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Like outsourcing a bunch of jobs to India and whatnot. But yeah, I don't doubt it. Like most of the uh, non blue decks in the format, the green PM, are playing like pretty busted cards. Wow, can we not? I need this Flicker Wisp opponent. Can we draw like Wasteland or Schadenport? Like, most of my three drops would be very good. Nice. All right, so we're going to recruit for Wisp, so we're okay here. It's kind of Yeah, it is kind of messed up. I didn't read a lot into it, but it seemed pretty fucked. Dead to rotation here? No, all right. They just don't have enough mana. They're like one mana short of just activating that turn. They don't play Ancient Tomb. Please don't Thought Seize me. Hex Mage, that's fine. Oh shit, that's not fine! Oh wait, yeah. Because they can Hex Mage my Vile. But it wouldn't have mattered if I had activated a recruiter, they could still do the same thing. I can actually tutor up um, a Remorseful Cleric and cast it to block a Merit Lage still. So I'm going to ping this Hex Mage into turn to force their hand. Because if I like activate Vile, then they ping Hex Mage. If they rotate the Bio into Herbar. Oh yeah, they can't even use the Mox Diamond, so that's true. So we're going to ping the Hex Mage here. If they try to, like... Revoke, kill my vial, then responsibly vial and recruiter and go get remorseful cleric. Okay, now there's making a twenty twenty, so that means we just get to go get a, a flicker wisp. So that's fine. Oh, never mind. They're abrupt decaying. Cool. Thankfully, they didn't do this until after I, uh, until before I activated. So now instead of killing this Merit Lage, we're just gonna go get Remorseful Cleric to block it indefinitely, hopefully. That's my only play, right? Otherwise, I just, I'm straight dead on board. Hope my opponent never draws Dread of Night. Luckily we have two moms, so we can still like start attacking. 
Man, this Remorseful Cleric is uh, way better than a, a Sarah Venture right now. Could gamble and grab a Wiz Hoping Drill. Yeah, that seems like really risky. <laughs> when, like, the, the alternative is don't draw a land and straight die. <laughs> wow, my opponent just conceded to that. Alright, deal. We did it. Played against Depths in a Classic, wanted to play Axe Mage in response to Safekeeper, and they responded with Rotation. Any guesses on what I expected versus what actually happened? Uh, so you plowed a Hex Mage in response to Safekeeper, they responded with Rotation? Like, I assume you expected Sajiri Step. I like that you said that, given them this is... Yeah, it's definitely a corner case of, like, the Cleric versus Avenger. I'm definitely not saying, oh, Cleric's definitely better than Avenger. Why are you playing Avenger? But it was just funny that, that that happened to come up after I was talking briefly about it. I was like, wow, I'm glad that I have this in my deck suddenly. <laughs> also, I have no idea what happens at the end of that story, Green PM. I assume something involving Sejuri Step is what I would expect. I have no idea what actually happened. 10. There's loam. Or not loam. Uh, depths. Depths on here somewhere. I always forget it. There's turbo depths, and I have slow depths on here, which are just like close enough to the same deck that I feel like because some there are a lot of games that you play and you're not sure whether you played against like slow depths or turbo depths and I assume everything's like slow depths nowadays. Lost game one, one games two and three. Wow, I lose a lot of game ones against depths. It's weird. I forgot they could get depths and do the thing. So I expected to oh that makes sense. Oh, we're playing against Bryant Cook. Nice. So we're probably dead. Well, we're on the play, so there's a chance we don't get to die. We don't die, but all right. Well, this hand, while decent, we are 100% playing against Tess. So <laughs> this hand is never ever beating Tess ever. So we're gonna ship it. Ah, oh, nice. Yay, Black Belcher. All right, we're gonna hope we don't die or get Thossiest on turn one. I almost want to, like, lead with Wasteland and, like, not play Vile to pretend I'm something else, but it's not worth it. I hope he's on that Mox Opal nonsense. What Mox Opal nonsense? All right, praying we're not dead, but the turn one brainstorms usually mean, like, you're about to get fucked. Please no kill. Don't do it. Don't kill me. Don't. Nope. Pass the turn. Nope. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. I mean, maybe he's just thought seizing because he knows death and taxes. He needs the thought seize on turn two. We'll just draw the second Thalia. It'll be fine, guys. Oh, well, that's a Thalia next turn if we don't die. Again, if... Please don't kill me. Don't do it. Alright, we're not dead yet. Although the turn one brainstorm in general means bad opponent or dead me, yes. <laughs> Indeed. S same with like end step brainstorms. End step brainstorms are also like either my opponent is bad or we're about to die. Don't do it. Don't kill me. Oh, no, we're dead. We tried. We tried our best. Maybe we'll have a bad ad nauseum. This looks like a good... This is like ad nauseum with one foot. Oh, is this just like... I don't know the math on how many... empties we can beat. Oh, we're dark visioning. Oh, yeah, this is just deterministic. One floating. Oh, this is just emptying for one more? Nothing else you can do with four mana, right? I don't think we can beat this. 
That's a lot of gobos. In fact, I'm almost 100% sure we can't. So we go to Recruiter, Violence, Stoneforge, Block 2, take 14, go down to 6. Next turn we have two blockers. Uh, block 2, kill 1, so down to 14 goblins. 13 goblins, attack with 13. Block 2 of them, 11 get through. I gain 4 life. Yeah, we're actually like 2 off. If he had Dark Magician 4... The empty. If we're like had two less goblins, we get to like live. I guess. Hmm. I don't think there's anything we could draw. Like swords to plowshares, maybe lets me live. Actually, you get to put in the wisp next turn. Yeah, I was factoring that in, but I'm losing this recruiter. So if we draw a plow and like get to plow my own wisp, then maybe. Or, like, a two-drop might muck up the math somehow. I'm not actually sure. GTA isn't better here, right? I could play equip GTA attack. Kill four goblins. No, that actually... I can play equip GTA not attack? No, that because then I don't get the, the trigger what happens, but I die. Yeah, I think if I draw exactly plow, then maybe I live. Math is hard. Sanctum Prelate, nice. Definitely not gonna do it because we can't. That's just not an additional thing we get to do this turn. We can't, like, play Sanctum Prelate and Banner Skull and Wisp, so we're just dead. I just want to kind of, like, math it out. I want to see... I want to see the end result to make sure I did my math right, to see, like, if we had drawn Plow, we could have done it, and I think that's the only card we could have drawn. I'm not I'm not positive Plow does it, that's why I'm waiting. Just kinda wanna find out. It's Xaxes. I think he's like two over, right? Played Prelate Wisp Land and then Stone Fortune Skull. I mean that is the same thing as Wisping a Goblin, I guess. It lets me like kill like I have a two drop that just kills the thing for free instead, but yeah, you're right. So I think I'm like too short. Yeah, or one short. So that means Plow would have definitely still won me if pro probably been any two drop. No, not a two drop creature. A two drop creature I could play and I'd be at just zero now. I think I needed to be exactly Plow. Because we're at negative one, so if we just like play a two drop here and it blocks, nothing happens. But definitely not like play to your outs, and we definitely had four outs in our deck. All right. Is relic worker worth it? I guess relic worker. It's like chrome oxen in this deck. Wow, we just have like nothing. Test matchup, not good. I hope you're going to turn one chalice. Yeah, especially because we just, like, cut one. Cut Ballista. Cut Jailer. Cut Spirit Keeper. Probably just boarding all of these. Sacred Cat is the character you need to hit. <laughs> That's true. Sacred Cat would have done it. Too bad I don't play the, the Sacred Cat bullet. Uh... Cut GTA. I'm 
What am I? Oh, yeah, I could always pause. What the fuck am I doing? Get this shit out of here. Play the GTA still? Probably not. Bring in something else. Brailing in case of empty. I think Brailing's like worse than GTA versus empty, right? I mean, obviously not if I don't have a creature, but I think in general I'd rather have a GTA in my deck than a Brightling. Especially because you can tutor for GTA. No, is there anything else better? Zero three with miracles and then four with some jank with doctor swords. I think it's better than Wisp. Or Brightling. Oh yeah, I guess Brightling's better than Wisp, yeah. That's fair. That is definitely fair, because Wisp is, uh... If that Wisp had been a Brightling, I think we get to live, right? Because we take an extra damage because we kill one less goblins, or a negative two, but we get to gain three life because we had white open. Yeah, if that if that Flicker Wisp had been a Brightling, we also actually get to live there. Huh. So yeah, that's definitely fair. Is GTA better than Wisp? I'm just submitting. Most of those decisions don't really matter. Not super often that, like, that matchup comes down to, like, very, very close uh, Goblin's Math. We are playing as the Bryant Cook. It's working out a lot worse than my, uh, when I played against Lewis CBR last week. <laughs> this matchup is a lot worse. I would love to play first. Um, I think I just have to keep this. It's also immune to Massacre, notably, but I don't think I'm supposed to, like, mull for my, ch my chalices, especially on the draw. Fortunately, we're super dead if I just get thought seized. <laughs> but no way I'm only going to hand on the draw with, or hand on the play with Athalia. And if they thought seized me, at least I could, like, port them. And hopefully draw, uh, like, a recruiter of the guard. Just don't get thought seized. That's my plan. <laughs> just don't get thought seized. Plus thought. Yeah, for sure. Just like snapping, snap keeping this. Especially because it's Krakus. Plus, like, if I get Krakus they, and I get the Solia in play, it's very hard for my opponent to actually answer it. So I can pick it back, pick it up, and put it back in with files and stuff. And there's no planes, so like, it's immune to massacre. Basic Island. Oh, that doesn't cast Thossies. We'll just get low spell Thossies, so it'll be fine. Or get turn one. Am I correct that the only one mana storm interaction? That's a creature or colorless is Judge's Familiar. Either a creature or colorless, those Chalice of the Void. If you're looking for one mana, because you can just play it on zero. Ah, oh, more just getting turn one, cool. Maybe this will be a really bad, uh... Wow, is that really bad? I can't... He's going way too fast for me to tell. He's going way too fast for me to figure out if, like, this is a good or a bad, uh... Oh, he's playing Mox? He is playing Mox Opals. What the heck? Seems kind of, like, not a card you want in this deck. I don't know what's happening. He doesn't have enough mana, right? Wait, yeah, because he doesn't have any red mana? But now he does, because he can LED Opal. Right of Flame, Right of Flame, kill me. I stand corrected on these Mox Opals. Apparently. This is lethal, right? Yeah, burning wish for tendril sendles me for nine million. Well we tried. That's all you can really say when you play against Tess. Definitely not a favorable matchup. This was static yesterday playing Human Thought Classic. That deck of dying, same dying before the second land drop problem. Yeah. Surgical 2 kind of. Yeah, Surgical is a very, very weak storm hate, though. 3 against Testament. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you manage to get lucky. I do have 3 wins there out of 7. So it's like slightly below 50. It is winnable, but it is definitely bad. Because it, it is the storm problem, like, taken to the nth degree. 
Because against Ant, your your biggest fear is that you die before you get to, like, you hit your second land drop. Against Tess, that fear is much more likely to be reality. Ugh, this hand sucks a lot. Chalcedon Zero is very good. Yes, Chalcedon Zero is very, very good, especially against tests. So they also have Chrome Moxes, and apparently Mox Opals. This hand sucks. This hand also sucks. Am I going to five? Probably. This hand does nothing. This hand's way better. Do I keep a third land? Do I want more gas, or do I want to reliably cast a Palace Jailer? Uh, I think I have one more stuff to do, right? We're on the play. Maybe that's greedy, but... I think I'm gonna, like, just end up topping lands. Just, like, flood out on a multi five and die. Whereas with Aether Vial, it's hard to... It's much harder to get mana screwed or anything. Oh, nope. There was some lag when I tried to play the plan, so I tried to play it a second time, but then the Mother of Runes shifted into its place. And of course, every time you make a sideboard change, like as soon as I cut the third chalice, it's like, all right, time to play against Storm. Because that's how that's how life always works. You're like, all right, I'm gonna cut this card to make a other different matchups slightly better. This is the one with like the Hope of Gearpers in it, right? I don't even have to click on that. To... I think I saw the Hope of Gearpers when I was perusing the challenge lists. I think I should cast one of these. Just telegraphs that we have a second one, but. Yeah, Hope of Gear Upper. I wonder what the plan is with those Mox Opals. They're just like better ad nauseums? Diminishing returns? Pulverize? Wow, we're going, f we're going full Belcher. I feel like Bryant is really stretching Tess to its absolute, like, Turn warning potential. It is truly the Black Belcher, the way this one is designed. Ah, uh, Miracles is not a deck I want to mold a five against. We have Jailer coming in eight million turns, but. Which can like have two moms here and get super terminist. Nice, the perfect draw against miracles. How will we ever lose now? I don't know what my plan is, but whatever it is, it's not good. We do not have a good plan. So someone's suggesting Damping Sphere, you can turn on with Ancient Tomb, that I think we should be playing, I'm like, we're playing Damping Sphere, and all my everything for the near future. Well, if we're playing, or if we're planning on trying to Ancient Tomb at our hate piece, we should just be playing Chalice, right? Jailer fix Mulligans. Jailer's a little slow to fix this Mulligan, and I don't like giving my Miracles infinity time. My Miracles opponent's infinity time. Unless my opponent just, like, Windmill Slams Monastery Mentor next turn. In which case, maybe we have a chance. Damning Sphere is actually... Yeah, Damning is fine. I'm just saying, like, you're not playing it, like, explicitly for your Storm matchup. I'm not going to put it in my sideboard and be like, yeah, now I'm not going to lose the storm. 
Because it just it's the same thing of the, the, the second land drop problem, which is you're not losing games against Storm where you're hitting your second land drop nearly as often as you're just like losing games because you never get to that point. But yeah, other than that, like, it's fine if you want to, like, bring in front of Drowsy and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is port means they can't just chase me. And we can take this vial up to four and, like, make it completely worthless. And then also draw our fourth land. Predict themselves. Oh, just Snapcaster. Sure. At least that's a target for Jailer, as bad as that is. Honestly, I'd almost rather them not have any targets, but I, if we're losing the Monarchy and they're getting back Snapcaster Mage, we're probably dead anyway. Especially because we also have this Plow to protect the Monarchy. If absolutely nothing else. Yeah, I really feel like I'm just going to like put in this palace jailer, eat the snapcaster mage, and just get terminist. Need prelate, yeah, please. We need Prelude on 6 really bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're also going to have to take this Vial up to 4, which means my opponent can just, like, counter all my shit. Really long ponder. Ponder feels like it shouldn't be that hard. Nothing's happened. Your Death and Taxes opponent has two cards left in their hand. You have seven. How many caverns are running? Zero. I don't need that shit. Any card disparity greater than three is basically infinite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My opponent has infinitely more cards in their hand than I do. Flashback their portent now. Card's fine. Definitely not, like, insanely good. <laughs> this is not a phrase I would use to describe Cavern of Souls. It's, like, only objectively better than planes against Sneak and Show. Sometimes better than planes against, uh, Miracles, and then... Oh, they're portenting me. Interesting. And, um, like, sometimes, but less often than Miracles, sometimes okay against Delver, because it, like, lets you play through dazes. Insanely good. I guess we can just, like, port their only white source, so I'm not scared of Terminus right now. So we'll take this up. Nice. Am I attacking with a mom? Probably not. It's not worth the damage. That's a good draw. So 100% porting this planes. Try not to get terminus. That draw is good for Terminus. Oh, yeah. This recruiter is definitely decent. It's probably going to get Force of Willed. I hate that this vial is on four. It's just infuriating. 
Kind of had to be had to go up to four there though. If they just force all my pals here, we just lose on the spot. Also not guaranteed we hit our fourth land drop. Is this just slam Jace? No, they because if they fate seal, they don't know there's a terminus on top. Okay, just passing the turn. A little weird. I can wisp my aether file if I want to. Kind of extreme playing DNT yesterday, and I was gonna have the two miss line twenty four in, in the board, but in the sideboard that seems kind of crazy. What do you got for me, opponent? Predict. Sure. Do they know their... I don't think they know their top card. This is just... Cause yeah, they just fetched with Flooded Strand. This is just blind predicting themselves? Names Flooded Strand, puts Swords of Plowshares, draws one card. Okay. Cool. Kind of weird. But okay, I'll take it. I almost want to flicker wisp this Aether Vial. <sighs> Is that bad? It also doesn't let me port them. Or beyond the point where port helps me against Terminus. And flicker wisping this vial both gets a bunch of power into play and lets me reset this vial. Like makes recruiter slightly better. I think I'm just gonna jam it. People have some sick draft strips here. <laughs> Poor matters, but not. Yeah, Poor definitely matters. Like, they can obviously. It would prevent them from a hard casting on Terminus or, like, casting multiple spells into, like, Mentor Spell Spell or something like that. This is obviously draft. Look at how bad our creatures are. We just managed to get lucky and open a Palace Jailer, who is probably insane in draft. Fred's Council's Judgment or Entreat, yeah. There's definitely, like, things. But, like, Blind Entreat for... I don't even know how many. It was Ruined Council's Judgment, but I don't really care about that much that they're judgmenting. The only card that I really care is if they just Terminus me, because obviously a 4 for 1 would be very bad. <laughs> At least if they tap out for it, we can redeploy. If they just hard cast one. And if they don't, now we have a... Five power clock, and we get our vial back to useful numbers. Sure, brainstorm resolves. We have cleric to get them with the snapcaster. Oh, when they get their, when they inevitably get their snapcaster back. I don't think I'm adding any more to the board here. I think I'm just going to plan on porting them and letting this vial slowly tick up. Hmm? Oh, well, what do they target? If they target vial, maybe we start. Yep. Well, considering they brainstormed and then council judgmented my vial, I feel like I'm definitely about to be a terminist. Which means just don't cast anything. The problem is they're just gonna like terminus and then jace me, and then we're just super fucked. It's like doesn't matter what I do. Cast recruiter. What would I recruit that I wouldn't just rather have a recruiter in my hand though? Grab a revoker, just prep for the jace. I wanted like six cards in hand and let's do a brainstorm with Chase. I would not expect Revoker to live. I 
can we talk about the, the first time I watched you? Oh, versus that like four color Aluren, Aluren Blade pile? Jesus, everything that my deck was bad against in one deck. <laughs> Surprise, Flash and True Name and Stoneforge. Go get GTA, kill you. That was not a good time. Like, I could recruit Revoker and Hope, and then next turn I like Revoker plus Cleric or something. There's just such an unlock. Like, it's such a low likelihood that we actually get to take the Jace off the table. And I'd rather try to, like, recruit for, like, Wisps and stuff. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna. We're 100% gonna get Terminus here. Wow, shocker. It's a miracle. Maybe they don't have Jace. You never know. We always just recruit for the Palace Jailer again. But, I mean, I guess we already have Monarchy, so that doesn't matter. Just rather recruit for recruiters and or Wisps or something. We just need to overpower our Jace. It'll be fine. Easy. If we had, like, the if I knew we needed, like, six lands to be able to recruit for her. Sanctum Prelate. Maybe recruiting for Sanctum Prelate there wasn't bad, though. Sanctum Prelate on one wouldn't suck in the face of a Jace. So we're just going to um, Stoneforge plus Recruiter, maybe? It's probably better than Cleric plus Recruiter. Or Cleric does it doesn't really turn off their plow. Because, like, it ends up just plowing the cleric, essentially, for free. The greed. Crusader plus mystic. I think just Stoneforge plus recruiter is fine. Yeah, Stoneforge gets Sophie, obviously. I think I'd rather the Stoneforge resolve that than the recruiter, so... the bait spell. Jedi. What up? Did you know cockroaches are sensitive to caffeine? What does that even mean? I don't know. Why would they get coffee? But it, but it sounds fun. I love Terminus. Terminus is rude. Terminus is a mean magic card. I, I, I appreciate it a lot more in, in Legacy, honestly. Because it's like, you can play around Terminus way easier in Legacy. Because it's like, a lot of, often it's just very obvious when your opponent's going to Terminus you. In Modern, it's just like, oh, surprise, one mana board wipe sometimes, I guess. Get ya. Flashback to that time I got blind Terminus three turns in a row in Modern. Am I grabbing Prelate here? Prelate lets me try to, like, claw back from this Jace. It turns off my Recruiter engine, though. I could just recruit more Recruiters. Let's grab Prelate. I think I need to, like, be able to try to play around Plow. If I draw a 6th land... No, that doesn't help me. I could still not equip... Like, put into play Equip and cast Prelate to, like, play around getting Plowed. This is a good time to remind you that people regularly register two Supreme Verdict Zero Terminus in Legacy? In Legacy, I'm definitely not playing around that, like, ever. Terminus is the is the default state. There's one guy that played Zero Terminus main, like, two Terminus sideboard or something, and did well at some sort of event, yeah. I just figured they had a force somewhere. Talk about blade decks. Okay, yeah, blade. That's totally different then. Blade obviously is not going to play Terminus. <laughs> 
uh, blade decks. Flashback to last week when I played against three straight blue white stone blade decks while playing four color loam. At least this uh, this monarch emblem is keeping pace with a Jace zero. They're getting a lot more card selection, but the same number of cards long term. Important, sure. What am I putting this prelate on? This probably has to be on one, and just I'm getting bodied by another terminus. Three cards left in hand. Back to basics, sure. We have like five basic lands, that's fine. I guess we're, uh, let's guess Remorseful Cleric first. Plays around Snapcaster Mage. And then, God, am I prelating on six or one? Step one, let's attack the Jays. We can definitely beat, like, some number of plows here. I think I need to put it on six, because if I put it on one and I get Terminus, we just die. If I put it on six and they plow some of my stuff, like, if, even if they plow, snap, plow, at least we get a chance to live. It's bad if they have plow, snap, plow on exactly this turn, because then they can actually, like, take the monarchy back, and obviously that just, like, spirals horribly out of control and we lose, but... Your sword. That's neat. No Snapcaster is great. At least we don't just like fucking die immediately. We have a chance to pressure this Jace. Important resolves. Hear a cat down there. Don't know what she's doing. Um, they shuffled, brainstorming. Hopefully, we don't get terminus in our upkeep. That would suck. These, with these all these portents. But I imagine if they're zeroing and not plussing, they definitely have a plan to kill this remorseful cleric. <sighs> we get an terminist. Definitely second the remorseful cleric we get terminist. Try to make their snapcasters worse. So I have six mana this turn. They're predicting themselves. Okay. Sure. So that means their second card down is Terminus, or they don't have it? I don't know. They have it. They just have a main deck path. That's kind of odd. And the fact that they're willing to just mill it also seems kind of weird, but sure. 
Could have just stacked the terminus as your top card. You didn't need to cast this predict yet. So you can cast it now. Let's exile your yard. Wins Arena. I don't know. I might actually like stream some arena at some point, but not in like the near future. I know actually I did just get into arena this past week, so I'm starting to actually do it. Like build up stuff. Arena's been like fun. I like that I drew a two drop, because I didn't really want to like just tap out for sword there. I wanna leave a plow in case of like Snapcaster Mage. Play Boros Prison. I don't think that's like a I don't think that's a standard deck. Grab the skull. Draw more cards. Well, we're keeping decent pace with this Jace, weirdly enough. They've burned through two Terminus. It's just as good as Sun and Moon and Modern. I would, I would not disagree with that one. I don't even know what deck you're talking about, but considering your penchant for decks, Caleb, I am... Would not be surprised if it's as good as Sun and Moon is in Modern. Fetch, sure. Got a lot of mana. Ponder, sure. Man, I wish those were like post board games and I could just cataclysm them. Because cataclysm would just be like game ending. They have so many lands in play. <laughs> sure. Snap shuffles on the ponder. So they don't know what their top card is right now. This is a mentor. You have the plow ready for the mentor. Nope. Nope. Brainstorm, sure. So now they're back to knowing their top card. I think they've used Jace this turn. Yeah, they drew three cards of Jace. Now we're back to them knowing their top card. Now they don't know their top card. Opponent's gonna time out. Yeah, maybe. Opponent is playing like pretty slowly. Sure, now they know their top card. She's definitely still like in this game too. Like we're not, we haven't actually lost yet. This palace jailer emblem has just been absurd. If we're getting terminus. We're getting terminus in our upkeep though. All right, let's see it. You got the third terminus. Nope. All right, what am I doing here? So I could play an Equip Sword to Stoneforge and make two Jace killing threats and leave up Plow. Do you still play that card that makes you Monarch? Yes, that's why we're Monarch right now. Palace Jailer. Actually, there are six. I could just, like, try to lethal them, too. But that seems unlikely to work. They can't just snap Plow me, right? Because they need a, they need a plow. They've already lost two, so they need plow snap plow, which would go badly. But we still have like plow as backup to like kill the snapcaster mage. Slowly grind down this jace. I don't hate making two jace killing threats. Try to actually take this jace off the table. Put in sword via stone so it doesn't get countered. I mean, then I can't equip it to the Stone Fortune attack with it, though. If they counter the Sword of Fire and Ice, then that's fine, right? They're just down two cards. We're down one, and we still have all this other junk. Like, I'm not going for lethal. 
Like, if I equip the Crusader, they just have a plow, and, like, my, my turn's over. By trying to equip to, like, the Stoneforge Mystic, we create a second threat. There are two things to deal with, and I don't really care that much. I don't mind that they force it. Now there are five. I can also just attack their face. If they flash in Snapcaster, though, we can't... We can't plow it for lethal, but... We'll send the Crusader at the Jace and Stoneforge at their face. Actually, maybe we'll send both at the face. Or both at Jace, I mean. Because this tip puts the Jace to one, so if they, like, plow the Crusader, the Stoneforge can still clean up the Jace next turn. Hey, it rhymes. You're not incorrect. This way, if they just flash in Snapcaster Mage, we have a plow. Wow. Opponent just concedes. We did it. We won. I don't know what the last three cards were, but we did it. What a fucking game. I, I'll take it. It was a good Monarch token, yeah. It was a very good Monarch token. Sorry I doubted you, Palace Jailer. Because that was uh, pretty obscene. Jailer very good there. Recruiter, Brightling, Judgments, and Cataclysms. I almost always Recruiter for Jailer first against Miracles. Yeah, it's... it's it's risky because that whole game we were trying to play around, like, getting end step Flash and Snapcaster, steal the monarchy and stuff. So it's definitely, like, a weird chess match that you have to play. But it's definitely good. It's a good chess match to be playing. Oh, we board in eight, board out eight. Pretty easy. Nothing else, like, really sucks. But it's fine. Your Pikachu ran away. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like my cat was getting into something that she shouldn't. As she always does. I see you. Do you want to say hi to the stream? Come up here. Stop hiding underneath the chair. Come up here. Say hi to the stream. Oh, she doesn't want to say hi to the stream. She's she's climbing away. Goodbye. She's standing on the back of my head. Oh god. Oh, she, yep, she's leaving. Decided to try the one on the board. Because, like, there's been a bunch of Delver. Oh, man, this hand's pretty good. GJ could be anything else, and I'd be a little happier, but, like, Vile into Chalice into Vile and Thalia with Karagas back up. Like, this is nuts. How do you find Breitling? I actually just added it back. Loads of socks. I hadn't been playing one for a good while, but there's been a bunch of Delver that I've been playing against, so I kind of wanted it. And I shaved a Chalice, so Breitling's just another good card against Miracles. But overall, it's, like, fine. The less Baleful Strix you see, the better the card is, for sure. It's very good against non-Baleful Strix fair decks. Just like Hallowed Spirit Keeper and Swords of Plowshares. The less Swords of Plowshares you see, the better. Alright, we got a lot of goodies here. I don't really care about resolving my second vial before I get the chalice down. Assuming the chalice even resolves, there's a pretty good chance that like my opponent will eventually be able to deal with it. If not, just immediately deal with it and we can just deploy the other vial later. Slamming chalice on two is just pretty easy here. Slamming chalice on turn two. Slamming chalice on one on turn two. Not playing a chalice on two. Sure. It's like actual factual counter spell? Nope. Disenchant? Just brainstorm in response? They're just fetching away their bad cards? Sure. <clears throat> D 
deal. There's also a chance they can't answer it just at all, and they just fucking die. So this following turn, if we don't have anything, we can still just play GTA, play Karagas Valenthalia. Sure. So they no longer know the top card, because they're predicting it away. Perfect start, yeah. Like, vi Violent of Chalice into, like, Caracas Thalia is just nuts. Man, if we just draw a Wasteland here. Good portent. Solid portent. Good Chalice check. Oh, wow. Alright. <laughs> cool. We did it. Easy. Easy game. Easy life. Sometimes Miracles just dies to a chalice. The shame concede. Oh, yeah. Oops, I forgot about the chalice. I mean, if their hand didn't have an answer to it and, like, didn't have more lands, then maybe that concession's fine. But, like, as long as they, like, disenchant the council's judgments, they weren't totally dead, but... We're definitely just going to GTA Violenthalia, have Caracas up, like, and crush their face in. Yeah. I've definitely forgotten about my own chalice before. I don't I don't fault people for get forget for forgetting chalices in play. I've been like, oh, why don't I just cast this other vial? Oops, that's why. Why don't I just cast this mother it's not shit? I've been there a lot. A weird game. Definitely didn't expect to win that, uh... That game one. The thing is, I don't think you need Breitling versus Miracles. I think you really, really wanted it, want it versus other non... Yeah, I don't, I don't need it versus Miracles. It's just, like, a nice filler. Like, another extra card to have. I put it in the deck specifically because, like, I wanted a card that was good against Delver. But I was also, like, shaving a chalice, so I was like, alright, well, we're making the Miracles matchup a little worse. So playing a card like Brightling is still a good card in the Miracles matchup while trying to leverage these, leverage these matchups that I'm actually trying to help. I mostly added it because there's just so much Delver floating around. It's Matthew Vuk. I have no idea who this is. Probably keeping this on the draw. We get three looks at a second land. I like Mom and Athalia. Shame down within Jeffrey. Ooh, top that. I should have been F6. They don't know what I'm on yet. Hopefully, it's on Delver and we can yeah, daze that and we just lose because I didn't scry land to the top. It's just like. Grixis control. Hey, for once in my life, I didn't get hymned into oblivion. That was actually like one of the better outcomes with this hymn. Uh, we're still fucking dead. Especially if they like cake man my vial this turn. Someone who beat Ross and Message Ball. That doesn't fucking help me, Moxall. How, how do you expect me to remember that? That's such an obscure point of knowledge. But they're not gonna let this mom live. Wow, if they just like K Command Grill really get me? Wow, that's rude. Land. Right, well, we lost. Good game. We tried. Both teams tried hard. Some of us follow Legacy. <laughs> yeah, some people, some of us own Legacy too, Moxel. Alright. I'm not playing this game. <laughs> I will snap concede to that. 
Recruiter, Brightling, Council's Judgments, and Katas. There's only six cards now. Yeah, I don't think I'm bringing in Chalice with only two. I think four Moms is better than two Chalices. Because we just have clean cuts here. It's like, I could leave in my Revokers. And, like, I could bring in Revoker and Chalice for the Moms. But I don't think two Chalice is worth it over four Moms. Especially because I'm not even sure, like, Chalice is worth it over Moms in general. <laughs> How can you call yourself a Legacy streamer if you don't know the result of an SCG semifinal from last October? <laughs> I couldn't even tell you the month that Baltimore is in, so you got me there. You're a step ahead of me, Patrick. That wouldn't have happened if we had snow-covered planes. Yeah, we would have drawn none of them if we had snow-covered planes. Ah, like this. This hand is cataclysms. How how do we possibly lose? Fuck, am I just gonna keep another one lander and die? This is a good one lander. We have Spear Keeper too. This is a good ass one lander. <laughs> Green BM won Eternal Weekend, Moxall. He was first place. This is a good. I'm gonna keep this. I'm just gonna uh, keep greedy hands. That win is all I have. I mean, it's a pretty good thing to have. It's, it's way more than a lot of legacy players have as our claim to fame. Oh, yeah, I top 16 in SCG Classic one time. This is pretty good. We have, like, Mom into Stoneforge. Am I grabbing Batter Skull here? Just like sword. Batter Skull's probably better over so mana light. And if they have the K command, like the sword's just about as bad as the Batter Skull anyway. Wow, that's kind of a dick move, opponent. That's not very cool. Why you gotta why you gotta be like that? I'm a four-time FM final. Oh, they don't need mom. Oh, they're, then they're gonna fatal push the Stoneforge? Wow. That's a super dick move. And we don't have the third line drop. Alright. Well, we got this Remorseful Cleric plan. Get him, mom! Battle mom, go! We draw lands. Try to get to the Spirit Keeper. Ah, fuck me. Do we have two? Is that enough? Do I spend a turn feeding it? Do I feed the Lily? With Wisp, or do I just Spirit Keeper to try to get the Wisp down? Probably just Spirit Keeper here. Because at that moment that all of actually cuts on. I, I mean, I wasn't very optimistic. We molded a six again and kept another one lander. I was happy to draw, to like scry the second land at the top to actually get to play a game of Magic. It was the, uh, the Pithy Needle that was the dick move. It's like Jace Bounce or Spirit Keeper. All right, well, we're on Cataclysm or Bust time. Guess I'll just keep casting Spirit Keeper. No reason not to, right? We are on the Cataclasm or Lose plan. Or what I like to call, this is why I don't play Gideon. Gideon's not going to win you this game. Cataclasm could easily win me this game. Yeah, sure, hit me. Well, I took the Spirit Keeper. That was kind of a dick move. But we can buy a time with Flicker Wisp on, like, this Lily, too. So playing anything just eats gets eaten by the lily and dies, so go ahead. My plan is straight up cataclysm. Hope they don't have force of will. Thoughtsy is sure. 
Take, yeah, take the Batter Skull. Do it. You got it. Snapcaster, him, me? Yeah, why not? I hope they don't take both these uh, Flicker Wisps, though. I'd like to keep one Flicker Wisp, please. Man. Now we need to draw, like, exactly land in Nakata, or other way around. Otherwise, we just fucking die to this lily. Alright, step one. Technically, fine. We just need to top deck exactly Cataclysm, exactly next turn. <laughs> please, Magic Gods. Fate Seal, bottom it. Ah, oh, they topped it. Nah, weak. Do you consider getting better versus him to Turok? I'm the worst per- Like, I'm so bad against him to Turok. Alright, well, we tried. At least that Grixis game didn't go on for like 800 years. We just stumbled on mana twice and died after mulling to six twice. Get in, get out, get on with my life. I'm so bad against the card him to Turok. Is if I have to like randomly discard cards, it is basically Thoughtseize. Him to Turok is Thoughtseize two cards from your opponent's hand. They can be lands if you need them to be. Same with Burning Inquiry. Because your lucky Pikachu left. No, Pikachu's over there still. You're gonna win this one. She was back for the last one. And we just got horribly bodied by Grixis control. She, yeah, she had left, but she was definitely here. She was here the whole time. Ugh, this hand sucks. Wow, this hand's much better. I swear I just saw her get back. I'm. 90% sure she was in the room for the entire Rixus control matchup. What do I want to scratch at the top? Probably just like third land. God. If we're on the draw, that'd be great. Someone snipe X with Legacy Hollow. Yeah, would never be able to be ever. Would always lose to Legacy Hollow one. Just turn one burning inquiry, discard all my lands. Or like keep a four lander, discard all my spells, draw three more lands. Literally cannot beat effects that randomly discard cards from my hand. Oh, the perfect land to draw. Not sneak, please. Alright, not sneak. Looks like Grixis control again, though. Ooh, Grixis Delver. Uh, well, we just ballisted down this pyro, so it's pretty good. Yeah, you left to chase away cast, but that was a while ago. You've been back for like the past ten minutes at least. I think so. Yeah. Land. <laughs> the opposite of land. I think I'm supposed to cast Mirror Crusader anyway. Do you run wastelands in this deck? They seem good. <laughs> no, we can't afford wastelands, Cadmix. We run ghost quarters. Yeah, I'm probably supposed to just cast. Just kind of walk into days, but like, eventually our hand is going to walk into days. We're so mana tight. I was just going to sure name me here. Four mana. Pyro. See, so fucking deal. My hand sucks, opponent. You can thought these away. Y'all gonna go see Detective Pichu? For sure. I wanna see that realistic Mr. Mime. I'm in for that. Bash. Hopefully they don't have a lightning bolt, or we're just 
stone dead. If we land three, the Spear Keeper could definitely have some text here. They hit both. Wait. Wait, they play Badlands in their Grixis deck? Are we not playing against Grixis Delver? Is it just like Grixis Pyro? Didn't even, like, register that they had a Badlands in their deck. That's okay. Phoenix deck? Yeah, the, um... Whatever that Phoenix is called has been floating around re recently. Arclight Phoenix? White Faces has been championing it? It's like dark, the Dark Red Buried Life Arclight Phoenix deck. Cloud of Amber Pyro. We played against it last week on stream, or towards the end. I think it was like the final day. It's just like a kind of a weird Grixis y aggro y deck. With like the nut draw of the Dark Rit and uh, Buried Alive for three Arclight Phoenix hands. Yeah, Cabal Therapy. I think that just kind of solidifies that that's definitely what they're doing. I think they are on the Arclay Phoenix deck, if I had to guess. Come on, land for Spirit Keeper. They could also flash back the therapy, but then they're just fucking super dead. Going turn one and nine. Yeah, their their turn one potential isn't that threatening because they need another free. Like they don't have that many free spells or any. I don't think. So they're uh, they need like double dark rate to bear to life. All right, they're making a bunch of phoenixes. I can definitely just trade with three Arclight Phoenixes by attacking. Wait, do these things have to attack? No, they don't. Yeah, just, no, stay back with all of them. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn all my guys sideways, right? If they, like, stack block this Thalia, I just first strike down one, pick it up. If they could stack block Crusader, I kill two, and then they still have to deal with this Thalia. I guess that block makes some sense. We can also use the therapy now as like a third spell. If they like cantrip, cantrip, flashback therapies in the phoenix, they get three phoenixes back, which could be bad. Maybe I'm like only supposed to attack with Thalia that turn? I'm not sure. We'll see how this next turn goes. We can always pick up Thalia, play GTA, put Thalia in an off file. Yeah, because if they just go cantrip, cantrip, flashback therapy on my spirit keeper, they just get all their phoenixes back. So maybe I just toss my uh, crusader away for nothing. There are two, though. So they have to leave some number of phoenixes back. So assuming they attack me for three, put me to fourteen. We just don't pick up the Thalia. Yeah. We just don't pick up the Thalia, attack them. If they double block, we first strike down one, pick it back up, and now we have this file. Hopefully if we draw a land, we can still deploy the GTA as well. Okay. 
alternate good draws would just be like Mother of Runes. Yep. We just get back three Phoenixes again. We can only attack with. They can attack with two if they're planning specifically on chump blocking. And not killing my Thalia. How much do I need to protect this Thalia really badly? Did I just slam Jite? I'm just planning on leaving up this Crocus forever. I could pick up the Thalia now, cast Jite, but then if I violent Thalia at end step, it still is open up to the same removal suite. Am I just not playing Jite? I feel like they can just get Arclight Phoenix back so much though, but I just like can't chaining cantrips. But I think I just need to like slam Jite. They have a bolt. We're just fucking. Or if they have a bolt, we're probably close to dead anyway, right? Daze this. How rude. Because if they have like a bolt plus a cantrip, they just kill me with arc lights. Bolt in my face. Perfect draw. Most of like macabre right here. I think macabre is like way worse than surgical, but like chalice is insane in this matchup. Yeah, I think this matchup we got pretty unlucky and still almost managed to steal it. Like our manage did not fucking work out for a million years. I think I definitely did misplay. I don't think I was supposed to just like ram my Crusader into into death. Yeah, this is guaranteed lethal. I don't find this matchup very bad outside of their like nut draws with Phoenix. Traditionally, I think a lot of their hands you can beat. They just play like a much slower Delver deck when they're not on their like Dark Rit. Um, Dark Rit, Buried Alive Hands. You usually need Judgments. They have Liliana of some sort. And just Exile and Removal seems pretty strong. Jailer seems pretty bad against Phoenix. Crusader seems bad against their deck. Equipment are good. Thalia is good. Moms, I don't think are great, especially if I'm on the Chalice plan. Weird that I'm on the Chalice plan and the Surgical plan, but... Rest in peace. I, I've thought about Rest in Peace. I'm still not sure where I'm at on the Phoenix matchup, but I feel like Rest in Peace is just very, very slow and is really bad against their non-Phoenix draws. But there's a chance that Rest in Peace is still good enough. I like Cl uh, Priest, because at least on their non-Phoenix draws it can attack. Recipe is just really clunky if my opponent's just like murdering me with young pyromancers and stuff. It does stop Cabal Therapy flashbacks, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's supposed to come in too. I've been erring on no, but I'm very inexperienced. Oh no, Revoker's really bad. I just realized that that was still in my deck. I'm back in a Wisp, I guess. This looks fine. I almost would rather have like third Recruiter over third Wisp, though. Recruiting for like. Cleric or Priest or even just like Thalia or Stoneforge. Play Rip. Eh, maybe on the play on the play Rip seems better because 
their nut draws only on turn two. Hmm. Got the Goku for a rip. On the draw, I'm not sure how much I like Rest in Peace. Rest in Peace is okay, but it's still like okay enough. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. It's a very new deck, so hard to have like a, a well thought out and ingrained strategy for it. Ballistin? Yeah, my opponent has uh, Young Power Man, so it's in the deck, so Ballista's fine. I think this hand is okay. It's a little slow, but Stoneforge is very good. Recruiter for stuff is very good. Removal spell for a thing. And double Wasteland Port means that we actually have a chance of attacking their pretty fragile mana base. Thought sees me. Oh, do they got the. I don't know, turn one Lily out of the veil. Sure. Um, I don't want to port a wasteland anymore. Probably port. Ah, oh, nice surgical extraction. Good to discard a Lily, I suppose. We're just running out of Stoneforge here. We want this Lily to start minusing. I'll grab Sword, though. Since obviously my Batter School is not going to do a lot, because the Lily's just going to eat my Stoneforge. But yeah. Most of what I think about this deck remain I, I mean I have not, I've not seen this deck in action I'm not like tested with it obviously and stuff like that but uh Fossil Season Recruiter here is pretty brutal but I think like it has explosive dark ritual hands but I think your hands like without like the dark ritual or especially dark like dark ritual in the payoff whether it's buried alive or a planeswalker I think your non-dark ritual hands are pretty weak and you just play like a bad Delver deck And I think if you want to just play an explosive dark ritual deck, there are just a lot of combo decks you could be playing instead. Yeah, thought seizing a recruiter and edicting Stoneforge is a pretty good play. I think I'm discarding Plow. We already have Surgical, which I'll probably discard in the future, but insurance against more Phoenixes. So if I wasteland them, they're just going to edict me. I put in sword, nothing happens, but... Probably my best play, right? They have removal for the stone force is really bad for me. Just like a bolt. Yeah, if they're just cantrip me again, that means they have to edict the stone forge now, which buys me some amount of turns. Yeah. Not a very Probably discarding the surgical now. This would be a Recruiter of the Guard or a Flicker Wisp, I forget. I think a Recruiter of the Guard. 
which fuck if I would rather have that than a rest of these right now. I think I'm going to play it though. Better than getting the extra port in and discarding it. Means that all they have is this lily. We do have several answers to it still. This is what I was afraid of. This is like literally exactly what I was afraid of, though, is that like rest of pieces really embarrassing when they're not on their Phoenix draws. Draw Spirit Keeper. Oh, yeah, after I play the rest of these two. <laughs> nice. So, like, Council's Judgment is our main way to win this. Even, like... We were on the play, though, here. We, I boarded it in because we were on the play, and I was like, I like it more on the play than the draw. This is just, yeah, it's a bad spot, but I think that's, it's not always, like, a bad, oh, it's a bad spot, so, like, it's still board, uh, reasonable to board in. I think that there are more cases where I don't want it than cases where I do want it, that was my concern with it. In which case, I would rather just be playing a different card. Because this deck isn't only, it isn't just a Buried Alive Phoenix deck. It is, like, a... Grixis aggro -y mid I'm not sure if it's more aggro or mid range, but it is just like a fair Grixis deck on one axis. So like flicker is one more land. Card they can't kill with Liliana. <laughs> Weirdly enough. They can make me edict it multiple times. Shit, yeah, now we're dead. Need to draw like plow to stay alive here. I think Claire technically keeps me alive, but it's definitely not good. Because they just edict me, and if I sack the cleric, why well, just die to Arclight? Uh, so I have to sack the Brightling. And then we just, like, die to two tokens. We could draw Ballista. Nice. Can't even cast it. No! 
This is why I was afraid of putting in Surgical too, but I think Surgical is definitely better than Rip in this matchup. But, yeah. I don't think this matchup is bad still. I'm interested in testing it more in the future, but I definitely think that Death and Taxes is pretty fine against it in uh, most cases. Assuming that they don't have, like... It's going to be very hard to beat their nut draws of uh, getting, like, turn one Dark Ray Blessed Alliance. We very, like, very almost, very much almost beat, like, turn one Dark Ray Liliana of the Veil. It's actually not that scary. One of the reasons that Liliana of the Last Hope is a little bit scarier, specifically in this deck. This is funny, you just drew horrifically badly there. Yeah, I don't hate the matchup at all. I think that game didn't work out great. How the Blessed Alliance felt. Never cast it. Also ported it in... Once? Twice, maybe? Very little amount of times, but... The Blessed Alliance and the Brightling I've just recently put in. I like the Brightling there at the end. Like, if... Like, like a bunch of pieces, like, did not fall into place there. Like, if our Vile didn't get abraded, we were actually, like, randomly very much in that game. If that one Vile had come off the top of turn earlier, so we could have, like, Viled in the... Like, Viled in the Remorseful Cleric to block the Phoenix or something. Then we had a shot there, too. Like, And then next turn, we untap, have the Vile on three. And then we, like, Vile in the, the Brailing. I actually have, like, a pretty decent chance of winning that game. Which is very weird and worked out. Uh, in theory, it seems amazing. In reality, you just never end up using it that much. I was trying it instead of a second path specifically because the matches I was losing to Delver decks involved Trinity Nemesis, and I would oftentimes, like, lose the game with, like, Plows or Paths in my hand. Is Lance better than Holy Light? Maybe, maybe not. Holy Light's, like, really hard to cast and really clunky, really bad against Days. Much worse against Ultrazi. Better against Empty the Warrens, so there are definitely, like, upsides. Also, Blood Alliance comes in foil, so... I was just trying stuff. This was just kind of like uh, throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. And I liked I liked having access to the Brightling still. It hasn't really come up like in matches that matter or anything, but... It comes in foil as a downside, yeah, sure. But especially with the rise of like, the Phoenix deck, I think Brightling's probably pretty good against the Phoenix deck, being able to gain life... Have you tried Isolate? I think Isolate's, like, pretty terrible in Legacy. You just have way better options. There aren't a lot of things at exactly one mana that you want to exile, either. Unless you're playing against, like, 9 out of 10 Death Shadow Delver decks. You probably don't want to Isolate. It's just super, super narrow. <laughs> but yeah, that league didn't exactly break how we wanted it to. What did we lose to? We lost to Tess... We lost to, like, double one-lander Molda 6 against Grixis, and we lost to, like, bad beats from Phoenix. So, yeah. I don't hate where that, that match went. What do we win against? Miracles and... God, round one was a million years ago. I've already forgotten. But, yeah. Nothing that makes me want to, like, make immediate changes... I didn't, I didn't admit, oh, it was, uh, it was Turbo Depths. Figured it out. It was in your collection a lot. Oh, yeah. I have some of the isolates. I don't know why. I have a bunch of, like, random cards. Also, this is definitely not Militia Bugler Moto. This is, uh, this is, in fact, not Militia Bugler. <laughs> a lot of weird unplayables. Why is it? Oh, wait. You guys all saw that, right? It was just, like, totally some weird Pegasus shit, and now it's suddenly Militia Bugler again? I'm not crazy, right? Chat, you gotta back me up on this. It's like Alter Art Bugler. Yeah, it, I, 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 like, scrolled down and scroll. Oh, it's right here. It was this thing. Pegasus Courser. I don't know what the fuck happened. Weird. Good quality. Moto's a quality program, everybody. No one tell him. <laughs> Fuck off, Patrick. But anyway, um, that's going to wrap up the stream today. So tomorrow's stream is going to be a little bit different. It's starting at 5 p.m., and I am not streaming. I'm actually going to be uh, assisting 
Lomerboy over on his channel, twitch.tv slash Lomerboy. He's going to be playing some Death and Taxes. He sat in for me playing Four Color Loam last week, so I'm going to sit in for him playing D&D &D this week. So I'll be hosting him while that's going on, so you can still, if you forget it or whatever, you can find me at his channel over there at 5 p.m. CST, which is four hours earlier than I usually start, so maybe people that usually can't tune in can tune in, stuff like that. Don't make fun of MTGO. They already shot for <laughs> I'll make fun of MTGO as much as much until they uh, until they fix Leon and Arbiter. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's the plan tomorrow. Um, other than that, the rest of the week's schedule is fine. I don't know if I'm going to be doing any non-death and taxes decks this week. I might do something on Wednesday or Friday. We'll we'll figure that out. But <clears throat> anyway. Thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out today. Let's find someone to host while I'm giving my spiel. Um, so, if you want to... Uh... Commence breath holding. <laughs> if you want to support the channel uh, some more, you can follow, subscribe, or donate. Follows are totally free, help you know when I'm going live, help other people find my channel. Um, subscriptions get you a sweet Thalia emote and Thraven themed subscription badge in the chat. And donations, I think I've worked it out. I think I know what I want to do with donations. There's going to be a price point based on, like, how much I want to play the deck. I think donating for, like, tiered legacy decks is going to be, like, $8. Bad legacy decks will be, like, $10, and modern decks will be $12 or something like that. So if I have to play modern, at least I don't have to pay for the league. That sort of thing. And they can be in increments if you want to donate a little bit towards the deck. And you obviously don't, like, donate the whole amount. I'll be keeping track of that. You can be like, $1 towards Tron, and eventually, like, 12 people will donate that. And then I'll have to fucking play Tron for a, for a league, whatever. But if you want to do donations like that, that is more or less how I have it set up for now. I don't really know how, a lot how it works. I don't get that many donations, so still trying to figure that much out. So let me give me feedback on, on that bit to see if that sounds reasonable. But anyway... You can also subscribe to my YouTube or follow me on Twitter. Both of those links are down below. Yada yada. I'm tired of giving this little end of stream speech every day. You've all probably heard it before. Time to donate for Legacy's Little Sisters. I'd probably stream that. That definitely falls in the bad Legacy deck category, but that deck looked pretty hilarious if you, like, never play against Storm. Anyway, who's streaming Legacy? Me. And... Oh, nope, it's just me. Fuck. All right. Who's streaming modern? Modern, Grixis Reveler, and Four Color Death Shadow, Traverse Shadow, Poor Dan Red, SCG Day One Competitor Plays Modern Blue Red Phoenix. Man, none of these seem like. things I'm, I'm in for. What do I want to do? Who am I hosting, people? Do you guys have anyone that you want to you want to host? Because I have I've got nothing here. The person streaming. I was trying to stream the person with one viewer down here at the bottom, but they're just literally not there, and they have one viewer, so I don't really want to host them. God, no one's streaming anything. Why? This happens. I guess we'll just host this guy playing some weird red deck in modern. Anyway, that's gonna be it. Catch you guys all tomorrow. Not on my stream. Over on Lomer Boy, I'll be hosting it. So don't worry. Catch you guys all later.